I'm Sheila Brummer with Siouxland Public Media News. A South Dakota Ethics Board has found enough information that Governor Kristi Noem may have engaged in misconduct when she interviewed in her daughter's application for a real estate appraiser license. The Government Accountability Board determined that appropriate action could be taken against Noem, but did not specify. Its procedures call for a contested case hearing that would give Noem, who was denied wrongdoing, a chance to publicly defend herself. The board also referred a complaint that Noem flew on state-owned airplanes to political events to the state attorney general's office for further investigation. Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts is on a trade mission to Ireland and the United Kingdom this week. Each year, the state exports about $10 billion worth of goods and services. The mission comes at a time when the Huskers are scheduled to play the Northwestern Wildcats in Ireland on Saturday. Kickoff is set for 11.30 a.m. and the game will air on Fox. Tonight, the seven people who want to fill an opening on the Sioux City Community School Board will have a chance to speak to the board tonight. Julian Albert, a Western Iowa Tech Community College Vice President, resigned on August 5th, citing personal reasons. The board has 30 days to appoint a replacement. The deadline for someone to petition for a special election, according to information posted on the district's website, is tomorrow. Hoping to fill the vacant seat are Eric Bowe, a retired engineer, businessman Chad Cranstall, former board president Flora Lee, the former 185th Commander Brian Miller, Pastor Joshua Potter, community activist Maria Rehnquist, and former educator and school counselor Bernice Scalero. Students in the school district return to class for the first day tomorrow. Potential White House hopefuls from both parties often stop by Iowa's legendary state fair during a midterm election year. It's a way for them to connect with voters who could sway the nomination process. But this year, the national political traffic at the fair was light. Democrats remain uncertain about President Joe Biden's political future, and many Republicans are avoiding taking on former President Donald Trump. Several would-be 2024 candidates have quietly made political inroads in Iowa by campaigning with state Republicans. But not everyone is shied away from the fairgrounds. Former Vice President Mike Pence visited on Friday, and Maryland Governor Larry Hogan came last week. The Republican candidate for Iowa's auditor says he wants to be a watchdog and the voice of the Iowa taxpayer. Todd Halber made his comments over the weekend at the Des Moines Register political soapbox at the fair. He touted three priorities if elected. So the first one is save the taxpayer money by eliminating waste, fraud, and abuse. The second one is accountability to all Iowans and to all taxpayers. Third is Make some money for the Iowa taxpayer by streamlining and making government efficient. For example, Halper says Iowa's Alcoholic Beverages Division should no longer have direct control over wholesale liquor in the state. Halber has a whistleblower lawsuit pending against the division following a dismissal in 2018. He is challenging Democratic incumbent Rob Sand, who spoke at the soapbox on Wednesday. The Iowa State Fair wrapped up yesterday after an 11-day run topping the 1 million mark again. State Fair CEO Gary Slater tells Radio Iowa everything went smoothly. Friday, fairgoers did experience three inches of rain that fell in a short time. The fair set an all-time record for the highest attendance on Saturday with almost 129,000 visitors. The fair also broke a Guinness World Record for the largest cornhole tournament that was held on Saturday. Case CCI Television in Des Moines reports 730 people participated, breaking a previous record of 444 set in San Diego, California in 2019. The 2023 Iowa State Fair will run from August 10th through the 20th. For Siouxland Public Media News, I'm Sheila Brummer.